Options, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the World Options Training Academy. What we're gonna talk about is whether or not Netflix is a buy or a sell. And this is gonna be a really good video to kind of break down some technical analysis, also break down some fundamental analysis. And if you are struggling with understanding these type of plays, hopefully this video can add some value to it. And I would probably encourage you to watch it a few times. Now we understand that Netflix is a streaming platform. They uh, produce their own internal content. Uh, they were selling this on a subscription basis with no ads. Reported earnings and they found out they had lost some subscription numbers. However, there's a lot of interesting things about this particular stock before that earnings, right? Now, let's look at the fact that this is not the first big drop in Netflix. So we have one here, right, at 120.22, right? We have one here, big drop from 508 to 397. And for some reason, that didn't scare people out of this deal. It continued to consolidate, dropped down a little bit, but traded, you know, normally to me. Then we see the massive drop a few days ago after that earnings, right? So it's interesting that this drop from 508 to 497 didn't shake people out uh, and didn't kind of was not a wake up call to people about what was actually going on with the stock. People were still very bullish on this stock. And, you know, I guess for whatever reason, people were very optimistic about the future of it. Um, you did see a total collapse. It traded sideways, in my opinion. And then when I were seeing a much larger collapse. Now, one of the most interesting things about this particular ticker is that we have confirmation that institutional buy in has left this ticker. So Bill Ackman, who runs a big fund, he bought in and I was telling people he's probably going to become an activist investor. And then what he said yesterday, which was on the 20th of April, is that essentially they uh, unwound pretty much all of their position in Netflix. And they did it in a day. So if you look at the five day, let's go to 420, right? This is where they, you know, pretty much unwound their position, right? You get a gap down and they just sold it sideways, right? So what you didn't see was a gradual unwinding. They just unwound the whole position, okay? Now, a lot of people are gonna look at this deal and they're gonna say, well, you know what? It's cheap now. So that means we should buy in. The question I want to ask is that, did you think that, let's say in early January, okay, because if we look at the top of the stock, it topped out at around 700, right? 690, closed at 690. Uh, that was the highest I think it's ever gotten. And then from there, it just kept grinding down, right? And this was in November of 2021. So when the stock closed at 602, was it on sale then? When the stock closed at 397, was it on sale then? Because what we've seen in a relatively short amount of time, they've cut almost a third of the value off this stock. Now we're trading at 214. What I'm looking for, because I pretty much know where the top is at, what I'm looking for is where I think the next support is at. Because we've pretty much blown past this support here that I saw like in the 290. So let's put that, let's let's draw that here. Let me pick a color that's gonna stand out. Let's go to the orange. Let me go to a big line. So let's say 300 around here, right? We've blown past that support. Right. We just put that support around 300. We've blown past that support. I don't see any more support until we get to about round 200. Right. On the weeklies. This is where I see the next support at. And then if we go under that support, then the next support is going to be around the 150s. That's to me why I see the next support at. And so I wouldn't be looking to buy until I saw this, me personally, I'm not talking about what you should do. I'm saying me personally, I would not be looking to buy into this deal until I saw it hitting around 200 and starting to consolidate. Okay. As long as I st still see people selling off and they just continue to sell, 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 even if it's very gradual, they're down 5% on the day. We're not even out of the, uh, the, the, the actual morning yet. I would not be in a rush to buy this. 
because there's a reason why it sold down from 690. But for some reason, people don't see that price. They just see the current price without understanding is that there's a reason why it sold down and there was really good support here. Okay. There was really good support in, in around the 500s, really good support there. They just blew right past that, right? Blew right past that support line. So that should have been an alarm to a lot of people that this thing is not looking good because they blew right past these support levels. There's really good consolidation and there's really good support in these levels here. And they just blew right past it. You understand me? Then get, there was decent support here on the weekly candles. So this stock, even though it, it moved up really aggressively, it traded to me really healthy. You just don't see like a parabolic move up. It traded really nicely. A lot of buying, selling, going back and forth on this move up. It wasn't just a parabolic move up. But when it started to sell off, they just blew past all the supports. And therefore, that's what I would be wary of. So now we're currently right now at 213. Let's go to the daily candle. Let's go to the 15 minute. So we're seeing the big gap down, the gap under the support of the 300, right? Under that 300 support. And then on the, on the 421, there we go right there. We just see every, on every 15 minute candle just selling. Just really hard selling on every 15 minute candle. And that's what I would look for. I would look for, do we start to consolidate let me zoom out some more. Do we start to consolidate around the 200 mark? And if we don't get a consolidation there, I wouldn't, I would still be wary about buying it. Then under that is like the round of 155. And that's what I would look for. And just purely from a technical analysis standpoint, fundamental analysis is the fact that they're losing subscribers. They're claiming now they're going to do, uh, they may start integrating advertising into their platform, which is, I always thought that's where they were going to have to go. Um, because they're realizing that people are price resistant. Therefore they may have to deal with ads. Now, if that works, they may be able to gain some of their subscribers back. Then it just becomes an issue of content. I spoke to somebody yesterday and they said, well, if they get good shows back, they could come back. Well, what's a good show? Cause to me, all the Netflix shows are trash. Right. But I'm very discriminatory about what I watch. So then how do we define what good programming is? What is good programming? I thought the appeal of Netflix was that you have a universal programming for a very, very low price for the people that like to just sit up and watch TV all day. Right. That's what I thought the appeal. I didn't ever thought the appeal was the programming. I thought the appeal was the price plus the endless library of programming because there's Netflix like universes that the average person doesn't know about. Like you type certain keywords in. They open you up to like a whole universe of Netflix content. I thought that was the appeal. I never thought the appeal was the actual individualized programs or this specific show. I never knew that was the appeal. Therefore, they have to kind of figure out what is going to be their value proposition to the market. That's going to allow them not only to add new subs, but keep people there in a much more competitive world where everybody has a streaming platform. That's going to be their competitive and what you're going to see and what I think is going to happen unless they can really create a value proposition based on differentiation, you're going to get a race to the bottom with streaming platforms. Because if you look at Amazon, they're not really charging a lot. I don't know what Disney charges, but what I think you're going to see, unless you have a way of really differentiating yourself in the market with something that your customer believes has a high level of value, you're going to see a race to the bottom. And then therefore Netflix may turn into a tiered platform with ads on the bottom of the platform and a payment plan on the top, similar to what you see with YouTube, where if you got YouTube and you don't want to pay for it, there's ad revenue generated, which is really how YouTube makes the majority of their money. And then if you do want to pay for it, you just pay YouTube directly and they can cut all the ads out of your experience. And that may be the, the, the platform or the model that Netflix has to go for. Then they can just now advertise on content. Right. But to me, the appeal for them for so long was that I have endless amounts of content for a very, very low monthly price. And as they started to move that price up, the customer became resistant to it, which means they don't value the content 
And I don't think it's about the specific content. I just think they don't value the content because you gave them too much content for too low of a price. And now they're dealing with a resistance in their customer of paying more money. So to me, that's going to be their fundamental issue, right? Are there other markets that they can pick up in nationally Africa, uh, you know, central South America? Yes, but they may still run into that same problem. And we know that the American customer, the Western European customer in email marketing, we used to call it the top five markets. Those markets normally are going to be able to pay the most money for content, right? So even if they pick up those other ancillary markets, they may not be able to pay what an American can pay for content because of the economics of that particular area. That's what you want to look at. Therefore, from my standpoint, whether I look at this from a technical standpoint, whether I look at this from a fundamental standpoint, it's a wait and see scenario. I'm not in any rush to try to save this stock, right? If it, if it pulls through, it pulls through. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Because like I said before, there's a reason why it could support itself at these prices. And even, like I said, blowing past this support. This is a really healthy support. It just blew right through it. There's a reason why that happened. And that's when people should have been aware of it. I'm not a fan of trying to come in after the fact and buy something because I think it's cheap without asking myself, how come it sold off from its highs? How come it couldn't support itself? How come the market didn't believe in buying it at this price? Now that may not be the most entertaining explanation. Uh, it may not be the most mentally stimulating explanation, but to me it's the one that kind of makes the most sense if you're trying to kind of examine this from a trading standpoint, from a buy and hold investor standpoint. And I have a lot of respect for people like Bill Ackman who has, who, who has the ability to admit that he made a mistake on this play and knows that it makes more sense for him to get out now because he can always take that capital right do something else with it and probably get in at a later date right a much later date if he thinks they can turn this thing around but i wouldn't be in any, any rush to try to save this and i wouldn't be in any rush to try to quote unquote buy this on sale if you got any questions or comments let me know david w williams also known as diamond dave talk to you later